Hi, it's Rico and welcome back to Brooklyn Cooking. It's been a few weeks since uh, we did a video, mainly because some of us YouTube chefs have to have a real job and work for a living. Uh, so I'm a tax accountant and up until October 15th we were very busy so I had to take a couple of weeks off. So we're back now and hopefully we'll get the videos rolling again. Anyway, today I'm making one of my signature dishes, uh, chicken franchise. But one of my closest buddies, my fraternity brother, my dentist, he just loves when I make this. We, I would make it for our card games. And he said he's had it at every fancy restaurant there is and nobody compares to this one. Now you can make this with veal. You know, normally it's veal franchise, uh, but we're on a low budget here. I got to use chicken. And it's also great with shrimp. It's, you know, it's one of our always go to dishes at Christmas Eve uh, and I'll show you really quickly what to do with the shrimp. It's basically all done the same way just whether you're using veal, chicken, even pork tenderloin or, or shrimp it's all done the same way. It comes with a make a sauce of a good white wine nothing fancy you know decent white wine something you would drink this is a Pinot Grigio but you want a dry white wine uh, a good butter and lemons and we have a couple of eggs and then we're going to fry these it's going to be fried in in flour and eggs the flour first the eggs second and we have a chicken i cut some up already you want key to this i think is is to make them very thin you want to slice these up very thin pound them out a little bit so i have here a chicken cutlet uh, we're going to get the wine out of the way because i'll probably drop it and break it and this way you can see a little better. So we're just going to clean it up a little bit. You always get a little fat on the edges. And, you know, I try to cut off the tenderloin. I'm going to use it, but this will make it a little easier to cut. Now you want to go very thin on these, as thin as you can. I'm going to probably pound these out a little. Don't cut yourself with a sharp knife. Just go straight across and want some very thin cutlets. Now depending on, you know, I usually make these small because whenever I make this, I'm making these, this for an army or a big Christmas Eve dinner if we're, but on that we'll be using shrimp. There's no, there's no meat in our house on Christmas Eve. So, We want these very thin. Basically, we want one sided chicken. So we're going to take these, pound them very thin. Now, it depends who you're cooking for. If you're cooking for just your family, you may leave it like that. If you're cooking this dish for a lot of people, you want smaller pieces, which is what I normally do. I'm going to make this the way I normally make it. Pound that out. Put it back in the pot. Like I say, if you were making this for a family dinner, that would be a nice cutlet, but we're making this for a bunch of people, so we're going to make them work for their food. We're all cut up here. We're going to get these floured and, you know, floured and egged and fry them up. And after we fry them up, we'll get to the sauce. All right, we have some eggs, two eggs. I added a little drop of water in now a little, and we want to season. And we got some just plain all-purpose flour. Just want to add a little salt and pepper to both of them, give it a little seasoning, and mix it up. Take your cutlet or your chicken. Try to keep one hand dry, with both hands dry, <laughs> so you don't have a glove. And then we'll coat it in the egg. Now we try to fry without making a mess.
You see, these are very thin. They'll fry very quick. You just want to basically give them a little color. Try not to crowd the pan too much. And try to remember where you started. Start it up there. Give it a little peek. That's pretty good. Let yeah, that stay a little bit. Nice right, frying away. Just a perfect color. You just want to get these some color. We're gonna get them off. There's no no real reason to drain these. Just this is gonna be our ultimate vessel. I mean, you got two ways to do this. You can you can do this and serve it right away. I kind of, since I usually make this for a bunch of people, I, I do it the day before, and it marinates in the sauce, and it really picks up some nice flavor. And we're not going to bore you too much with the frying. We'll finish frying up, and then we'll move on to the next step. We have everything fried. Uh, we laid them out in a nice pan. One thing when you weigh them out, you don't want to you don't want to just throw them haphazardly on each other. You want to give as much surface as you can so the the sauce can adhere. Uh, right now, we're I have three lemons here. We may need more. We may not need need them all. So I clean them good. I clean them off with hot water uh, because these are going to go into the pan. So you want nice clean lemons. You're not going to eat the skins, but and. I don't like pits, pits, pits in my sauce, sauce, sauce. So we're going to squeeze these out. And we'll get one of these fruity little things. Oh, by the way, this is two pounds of chicken cutlets. Uh, so my basic formula is about a quarter pound of butter for a pound of chicken cutlets. So here I have a half a pound of butter because I got two pounds. Even I could do that math. So you want to squeeze these out. We'll cut two to start. Like I said, there's no set formula. I mean, pretty much two lemons should do it, maybe two and a half. You know, some lemons are bigger and juicier than others. So when I pour it onto the chicken, I'll see how we're doing on lemon. We're going to use these in the sauce. We're going to use these pails in the sauce to bring out a little more flavor. Let me drain this a little. And we'll see how it goes. Now we we'll just want to try to evenly pour this over the chicken. Get some on everything. And that's actually pretty good. Then I, cu I cut these in half so I get a little more surface. We don't get this out of the way before we have an accident. I cut these in half. You'll see what I'm going to do with them shortly. We're going to need some parsley, so we'll just chop some up quickly. Not a whole bunch, as you can see. You know, I don't want the pits, but I do want to save some of the, the pulp. Of course, a lot of good flavor in that pulp. And we'll just throw that on the, we'll just throw that back on the chicken in a bit. So we have a half a pound of butter. We'll save a little bit because I'm going to, You'll see what I do with that later. I don't even think we need that much. And then we'll go to the pan. We melted the butter nice and slow. We don't want to brown this. We want this to stay nice and yellow or whatever color your butter is. And we're going to add these lemon peels. Good flavor in these things. It adds to the party. Oh, 
Okay, as the butter starts heating up, and now it's time for the wine. Uh, basically, I eyeball this. We're probably going to get a good half a cup of wine, if not more. And we'll, then we could kick up the heat a little bit. You just want to cook down and evaporate the wine somewhat. You want to push down on these lemons, get as much of that lemon out of there as you can. I think we're going to add a little more wine. Until it comes to a boil, the wine gets evaporated. I want to give it a little smell. I smell that wine into the nostrils. You should have smell-o-vision. And since we're, on, since we're going to bake this in the oven afterwards, uh, you know, you're going to get more evaporation. That's about good now. Now we just want to pour this over the chicken. Those fall out, no big deal. Pick them up. See, just a little water, and then you want to play with the lemons. You'll see the water turning yellow. This mellow this just mellows it out a little bit. We'll take a little bit of the parsley now and add it in. We'll put the rest on top. And that's good. We'll add this to the pan. And basically we're done. Um, you could leave these lemons on there, but we're gonna make these a little nicer. Alright, finish up time. I don't like throwing away the pulp, so I just sprinkle that in there. It's going to get thrown it, fluffed around anyway. Get this out of the way. Now a little piece of butter we saved. I'm going to cut up a couple of pieces. I'll put one in each corner. One rule in cooking, you can never have too much butter. And we'll do that, and we got one piece of it. We'll put, break down half, we'll put a couple of pieces in the middle. Then we'll sprinkle it with a little parsley. One thing, give it a little, a little sweet paprika. Nothing, not going to add any flavor. really just a coloring thing to make it look nice. And then we need to garnish it with some lemons. We could have used those peels, but we're going to make this look nice. So, we're going to dimly slice a couple of lemons, or a lemon. And we'll just throw them around. And that's it. We have some left for lemonade. And, no, this is basically ready to go. You can eat this right now. Everything's cooked. Uh, I like to, I like to make this, I like to make this a couple hours before, the day before, let it, let it marinate a little, let the flavors come together, and then pop it in the oven. Like I say, everything's cooked. You just put it in the oven, 375, 400, until it's heated through. You look at it, you, you got a lot of juice here, probably a little more juice than I normally have. And you see it bubbling, it's ready to go. And you take it out and you eat it and enjoy. So we'll we'll put this in the refrigerator for for tonight and then we'll make this tomorrow. A little bonus selection, like I said, uh, this is great with veal or or shrimp. So I don't know how many of you carry some shrimp in your in your apron pockets, but I got two shrimp here just to show you what I want to do with them. Uh, these are basically just shelled. You need to divine them. Divine them, I mean, or whatever. You take that out, little thing out. Get that little disgusting thing out of there. Now, mostly people are going to cook shrimp like this, but for this dish, you don't want to do that. You want to butterfly them. Because butterflies are free. So you just want to cut them down the middle. 
spread it out, give it a little tap, and you got a nice butterfly trim. Do the same thing with the other one. Don't try this at home with a big knife like this. And butterfly it out. And this way, you're going to fry them the same exact way you did the chicken with flour and egg. And now it's, it'll be nice and flat and it'll be able to absorb plenty of the, the, the juice or the sauce, whatever you want to call it. Welcome back, it's tomorrow. Even though they say tomorrow never comes or it's never tomorrow, it's tomorrow. Anyway, we had this in the oven for about 20 minutes. I had it at 425, a little hotter than I said, because I had some baked potatoes in there. Like I say, it's not that important, the temperature, 400, 425, 375. You're just heating this through. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, a couple of things I forgot to mention I mean, yesterday. After we fried the chicken cutlets, you hit them a little, little salt and pepper. I forgot to mention that. And if you're doing it to eat right away, when you make the sauce, you know, you, fr you fried the chicken cutlets first, and now you make your sauce, I would put the chicken cutlets back in the pan with the sauce and let them cook together for a little bit. That's if you're doing it right away to eat. Uh, so you get some more flavor into the chicken cutlets. This is a recipe our old family friend, Patsy, made for us. My wife had it in a restaurant once and he, when he came over uh, she asked him to make it and that's the way did. I never looked up a recipe for this and this is the way we made it and people seem to love it. Uh, you know Patsy was a cool character. He loved the racetrack uh, and you know he would come here pretty much on Tuesday nights. He would take the train in from Greenpoint he would come here on Tuesday nights, most Tuesday afternoons, spend the whole day. And he came Tuesday because the racetracks were closed on Tuesday back then. Anyway, well, we would sit, we would sit down to eat at the table right next door. And one thing he would always say that stayed with us, we would, once everybody was sitting down, he would say, if you don't see it, don't ask for it. And we ate. Anyway. I'm going to give this a try. Plenty of sauce, as you see. And delicious. And in honor of Carolina Restaurant, they used to give you, when you started the meal, they gave you a little vermouth. And I'm going to have this. I'm going to have it in a Belmont Steaks Cup. Which one of the few times I met Patsy at the racetrack, I went with my bestest buddy on Columbus Day in 1973 to see Secretariat run. Secretariat ran on the grass. I don't know if it was the first time he ever ran on the grass, but he ran another mile and a half, same as the Belmont Stakes, and he won almost in the same time as he won the Belmont Stakes. So for Patsy, my mother, my father, and for Secretariat, I salute. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and arrivederci until the next time.